Let's check out a JSON example from a viewer submission. This is what the file looks like. In the end, this is what we're going to end up with, two different data frames. This data frame is completely breaking the data down, whereas this one retains the key value pairs in a list of dictionaries. <laughs> Welcome everybody, you're watching Mr. Fugu Data Science. Let's check out a JSON example from a viewer submission. I created a new section on my channel for viewer submissions for playlists. Since I've had so many over the years, I'm gonna start dumping them into there and then the respective playlists for whatever content it is as well. Feel free to hit me up here on my socials. The code will be in the link in the description below for my GitHub as usual. This is gonna be a simple example. I wanna go over kind of what was going on with this guy's code for what he sent me, what to think about for future considerations because this is a learning exercise for everybody. If there's times where you just confuse your learning, maybe you forgot how to do something, whatever the scenario is, that's the purpose of why I started this channel. This is what the file looks like that I was sent. Two little entries. Each entry has three key value pairs. One key value pair has a list of dictionaries. We're going to go over a few different ways how to solve this and what to think about. In the end, this is what we're going to end up with two different data frames. Shameless plug, but I'm going to say it anyway. Feel free to help support the channel with memberships or super thanks. Let's get into this y'all. We have have pandas and JSON for the only two imports today. Super easy. Once again, let's look real quick. Feel free to pause this so you can see what's going on with the data. From the viewer code, this is verbatim what he has sent to me. This is just a learning experience to see what's going on. He created some kind of function where he wanted to iterate through his dictionaries and in doing so, he wanted to get all his key value pairs. So you're throwing in some kind of dictionary you're iterating through and he wants to return a dictionary where he was iterating. He was taking the items. When you're doing the dot items, you're basically taking this as your key value pair setup is like a tuple. Here, we produced an error. Okay, we're going to look at that error in a second. Then he just has some list. And through that list, he said, I want to iterate through the length of my data, which is going row wise, line by line. And we're going to call in our function and grab each row. And we're going to append it and throw it into a data frame. And when I looked at this, I said, man, this is a lot of redundant use of going through loops that's unnecessary. And you could run this through in probably two lines of code. And now, I have to run through even the second part here. So it's thinking, all right, let me simplify this for him, but let me try to figure out how we could help think about this in the future, you know, to help other people when you're coming across this, if you're learning or maybe you're a little rusty, because that's the whole purpose of all of this for me to make videos is try to give people ideas and tips. Hopefully I can help somebody in the world. Most of my stuff is very specific because viewers reach out and, I'll, and I decide to make a video for them. But I also want to make blanket videos to help the masses as well, which I'll start doing shortly. Find out what this guy's error is. We have some string object that has no attribute items. Okay, so that means that now when we're dealing with this iteration, we're not actually looking at a dictionary anymore. And it starts here at this iteration point where we're saying, hey, we got to trace it back. Now when we're iterating through this, we say, okay, it stems from the problem of returning this dictionary with the iteration of the tuples. Let's go through this and figure out what's up. Data science, data science, data science for the algo, y'all. Let's break this down. What did I do? I decided to take the original data, which was a variable name of S1, iterate through this, and he had what was a list comprehension, which really wasn't necessary to go through this portion. But let's go through this anyways. Let's try to distinguish this a little bit, do something like this real quick. And then we could do like this, just to make sure it's absolutely distinct. Let's pay attention real quick. We got this printed out, we got this line break, we got this printed out. Let's talk about this. This is the second entry. This is showing me that the iteration is is bypassing the first part, printing off the second part. We're not storing anything. That makes sense. We look further and we see the second portion. We say, huh, okay. We have the data, which is, this is the second entry and it's printing again. And then I say, well, I have the list, which is printing out. Let's change this up a little bit. Let's play around and see what happens. Let's scroll back down and we say, huh, it's looking the same, but what's going on? This is the variable selection that the user decided to retain. This is what I was deciding to play with and let's see what happens. Let's do like this now. We see the first entry is printed out. We see the second entry. This is looking good. We have the first one for the list and where's the second one? Right here. So it looks like we're going in the right direction. We're still using two loops. We do have one which is a list comprehension. We got to pay attention to something. This is what he had initially. This setup right, right here if I'm correct. 
correct, right? Let's go back. Yep, that's what he had. So let's go down and let's print that off. And that's where we had that error, right? So we had that error here. Let's do it on this one so we can still get the other print out. It's letting me print it off now correctly where we have entry two and entry one. And the reason I wanted to go laboriously over this is just pay attention to what you're iterating over because in the next step, you're going to see something that's going to look a little goofy and you're going to say, huh? So just take mental note of what's going on here because this right here is unnecessary. We don't need to go further into breaking this down. That's just one extra loop, appending stuff and calling a function, which is iterating twice. You have two iterations, plus you have a comparison that you're doing going row wise, which is unnecessary here. What I just said is pay attention to what you're iterating over. Why isn't this S1? Why am I doing this over J? Because I'm not going through that initial step of iterating above. Pay attention. That, I think that's what might've confused him. I think he was on the right track. I think he just confused himself and it's an easy mistake. I do it all the time to myself. This is just to help for anyone else. It happens to all of us. You could spend weeks trying to figure something out. And it's just going nowhere. So I'm glad that he reached out to me because hopefully this could help somebody else too. But we still have this right here. Sometimes you need to break this open. Sometimes you don't. Every case is different. Some people want it. Some people don't. I wanted to illustrate something else. We could use that comprehension, right? We could do that iteration. We could do it right here directly for our key value pairs. And you set it up something like this, especially if he's trying to continue with this looping process here, which achieves the same type of thing. What would really happen if we just broke this apart right here? Let's find out. Oh no. Well, look at that. Why is it saying this? Because we're not inside the actual iterator yet. We're on the outside list. You see? Because this is a list. What I just called here is the entry in the list, which could have been done doing the range length and iterating through. And that's how you call each one of these entries. And that's why you got to be careful and pay attention to what you're doing because you could come into a situation where you keep getting these errors, but you may not understand what it means, especially in the beginning when you're learning how to do this stuff. But what if I need to break this down? And what if I want to do this in a super easy step? Two lines of code. We got it. And it'll do everything for you for this scenario, for this piece of data that this guy had. We're going to use JSON normalize and pandas explode. These come up all the time. Here's the data we're dealing with. And here's this super easy code that we're going to have. The first part flattens our list, which is this data. And you see the dot notation because you're going inside a nested portion. The further you go, Go for nesting, the more dot notation and naming convention for the keys will be attached to this. If there is one more layer, it'd be x dot some name, y dot some name, z dot some name. Okay, so here we go. When we go through that, we flatten this out. So this do this. So we can really illustrate what's really going on with these data. Okay, let's take this. Let's look at this in three steps, and that'll help you illustrate what's going on. And then the last part, we're going to print this whole thing because really that is what's going on. So we first start with this list, which we flatten out with the pandas explode, which gives us this. Now we use the JSON normalize here and we're using this dot load S, which is dealing with a string and we're orienting this towards records for this to work out. And that's what flattens it out. And by this inner dictionary, you get this dot notation for each one of those extra keys. And that's it for this example. Super easy. Here's one last way we could have dealt with this. We could have took our original data. We could iterate it through it since we're going through a list of data, a list of dictionaries, we could call values. Then we could take that as a list of stored values and attach our keys to it. And that's what's here. And that's one last way for these data, you could have set it up. I hope this made some sense, but please like, share, and subscribe. And if you subscribe, turn on that notification bell. Please hit me up here on my socials. As always, I'll see you in the next video. Data science, data science, data science, data science. Python, Python, Python. Later. Hey kid. Never let them get inside your head They'll tell you what to do in life instead Of everything you know that you could get Don't let them guide your life towards regret